To understand the seven last plagues, we first need to understand the plagues which fell in Egypt. 1 Corinthians 10.11 says, What happened to the Egyptians is an example for those who live in the last days. The Egyptians oppressed God's people and would not allow them to go free and worship the true God. As it was in Egypt, the plagues in the last days are also over the issue of worship. The Israelites were protected from the plagues. Likewise, God's people in the last days are protected through the plagues, and afterwards, Jesus delivers them. The first plague found in Revelation 16:2 inflicts sores on the body from head to toe. Those who promote the church-state union and enforce the mark of the beast say, unless you accept the mark of the beast, we're going to physically afflict you. The first plague says to them, you can't deliver on your promise because your people have sores from head to toe. The first plague says, in Jesus is our physical security. It's not in popes, governments, or church leaders. Under the second plague in Revelation 16.3, the sea turns to blood. When this happens, it destroys the world's economy. But those who enforce the mark of the beast say, you better take the mark of the beast or you won't be able to buy or sell. The second plague says to them, you promised economic security, but the entire world is now in chaos. The second plague says, in Jesus is our economic security. The third plague in Revelation 16, 4 through 7, turns the rivers and life-sustaining drinking water into blood. The enforcers of the mark of the beast say, if you want to live, you have to have the mark, but they can't protect their people. The third plague says, in Jesus is our life. All life is in Christ. While the wicked receive blood to drink, God's people will have water. Just look at Isaiah 33:16. The fourth plague in Revelation 16, 8-9, scorches the wicked with the sun. Those who worship on the beast's counterfeit Sunday, instead of God's true Saturday Sabbath, will be scorched by the sun. Our worship belongs to Jesus, not the Pope. The fourth plague says, in Jesus is our worship. The fifth plague of Revelation 16.10 brings darkness on the throne of the beast. Light is a symbol of truth, spiritual knowledge, and wisdom from God. But the wicked have looked to the beast for light and truth. So now, God fills the beast's kingdom with darkness. The fifth plague says, in Jesus is our light and truth. The sixth plague of Revelation 16.12-16 dries up the river Euphrates, preparing the way for the kings of the east which leads to the Battle of Armageddon. In the Old Testament, the river Euphrates was Babylon's support system. It ran through the middle of the city. Babylon represents spiritual confusion. In Revelation, we have spiritual Babylon, which represents a church-state union of confusion. Revelation 17.15 tells us water is a symbol for multitudes of people. Now, after all these plagues have fallen on the multitudes that follow the beast, they begin to say, wait a minute, these religious leaders who told us they would save us have no power over the plagues. So the followers of the beast are confused and withdraw their support. This is the drying up of the river Euphrates. The sixth plague says, in Jesus is our salvation. Just as Cyrus, the king of the east, delivered God's people from literal Babylon when the river Euphrates dried up, so Jesus Christ, our king of the east, will deliver us after the wicked withdraw their support from spiritual Babylon. Jesus says in Revelation 16:15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. This proves that God's people will be on earth during the plagues. It makes no sense for the Bible to say Jesus comes as a thief to deliver his people after the sixth plague if he already came as a thief before the plagues began. In addition, Psalms 91, 5-10 says, With your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. In order to see the reward of the wicked, the righteous need to be here while the plagues are being poured out. During these plagues, God protects his people. The seventh plague in Revelation 16, 17 through 21, climaxes with the return of Jesus and the Battle of Armageddon, which means mountain of slaughter. Jesus returns as King of Kings. In Jesus is our deliverance. Revelation 16, 17 and 18 says, Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. 
This earthquake levels the great cities of Earth and causes the islands and mountains to crumble. The wicked are destroyed by great hail and God's faithful followers are caught up to meet Jesus in the air, just as 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 proclaims. To avoid the seven last plagues, you must reject the beast and follow Jesus. Reject the counterfeit Sunday Sabbath and remember to keep God's holy seventh day Saturday Sabbath as God commands in his Ten Commandments. Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash sapphire throne media and visit our website at www.stmedia.co. To learn more, email stmedia.co at gmail.com with your name and address for the free book, The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan, available within the continental United States while supplies last. Outside the continental U.S., we'll send you the book in PDF format. So please email us today with your name and address, and we'll send you this free book, The Great Controversy, Past, Present, and Future. That address again is stmedia.co at gmail.com. May God bless you as you seek to learn and follow His will for your life as found in the Holy Bible. One final note. Please do not request this book if you already have a copy in your home. Thank you, and God bless you.